What's going on, everybody? Welcome. We're going to get this show started shortly. Thoughts of the Week Podcast. What's going on? What is up? What's going on? What's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? This is the Thoughts of the Week podcast. Thoughts of the Week podcast. And today we're going to talk about the voting aftermath. I hope you guys join us. And just real quick. Y'all give me a few minutes here. I know y'all want to see my face and all. Let's see what we got here. There you go. Let me throw on the camera real quick. Boom. There you go. What's up? What's up, everybody? How you doing? And um, just give me a few minutes here. I'm going to share some of this out. We're on Facebook Live today. Facebook Live. And then once the show is over and it's done, it's going to go out to, if you look to your right, you'll see all the different platforms. These, not, these are not just the only ones, but these are some of the platforms they will be going to later on once this show is over. It will go to Apple Podcasts, Overcast, uh, maybe not Periscope. Um, I got to figure out an, a way to um, work that Periscope in. But Google Play, Black Social, Radio Public, Pocket Cast. Um, It's also going to Spotify. Um, Google, I think there's a Google Play. And then there's a Google Play, or Google Podcast. All right. But I'm glad you guys are here to join me. And um, like I said, give me a few minutes. We should have a pretty fun show today. To a degree, a fun show, maybe some seriousness involved as well. You guys come and join, join, join. Also, share with other people. And um, if you happen to be listening later on, or you know people who listen to the podcast, be sure to tell them if they if they go to other platforms like um, podcast listening platforms like iTunes and things like that, Spotify. I forget there's other one. There's other. Um, platforms I'm on as well, but um, be sure to tell them to go to Thoughts of the Week, all right, type in Thoughts of the Week, and you should get this podcast, all right, and I've been thinking lately about showing y'all how I get this, this look that you see on the screen, and how you see the little words and stuff. I've been playing around, experimenting as I always do, test and learn things, experiment, play around with some stuff, and come up with a nice little look as you guys see right here, all right, so, um, again, just give me a few minutes to uh, share this Facebook out to a few folks. All right, let me see here. Shout out to Team Hustle. About to share this out to them so they can check me out live. Anybody that's 
rocking with me today. Maybe they'll put that out real quick. But um, like I said, I'm talking about the voting, voting aftermath. How many of you guys voted today? How many of you guys voted? How many of you guys didn't vote? How many of you guys think that voting really doesn't matter? All right. Let's see here. How many of y'all was getting influenced by people trying to manipulate you with the ancestor? If you won't do it for the ancestors, that's then you're not the family. How many of y'all got sucked in with that one? Right? How many of you guys got sucked in with that comment as a way to draw you in to vote? There's gonna be some uh, questions, some comments. Uh, I'm gonna play you. Some, I'm gonna play you a couple of videos here and there. Maybe show you a couple of um, websites a little later on. We'll just see how things go. We will see how things go. All right. But again, I want to thank you guys for um, joining, joining me and checking out the podcast. As always. And uh, just bear with me. Like I said, um, I'm just trying to share these out on Facebook. And again, once this um, this live show. It's finished. It will be uh, broadcast and put up on YouTube, my YouTube channel. It'll also go out to the various platforms that you guys see up here: Black Social, Radio Public, uh, maybe not Instagram. And then again, maybe so. I don't know. Uh, definitely the Twitter, Google Play Music. There's a Google Podcast, Apple Podcast. I think iTunes is part of that as well. Overcast, of course, Facebook. Um, Pocket Cast and a whole host of other platforms. Anchor, shout out to Anchor for making this happen. Um, let's see here, let's see, let's see. So, for you guys who might want to listen to it later, right? And check me out later. You can always, and you listen to those platforms, you can always go to those platforms and check me out there. All right? Just sharing these out to a few more people on Facebook, and then we're going to get into this thing. All right? Um, originally, I was going to do. By the way, you guys feel free to comment. I should be able to tell if you guys have commented. So definitely feel free to comment. All right. Definitely feel free to comment. And hopefully when you comment, I'll be able to respond to it. All right. Like I said, I'm always testing things out and trying new things. And this screen that you guys see here looks real fly. Um, if you are interested in knowing how to do that and get your podcast started, I will. I was considering um, making a small little mini. Class, I was I was debating on whether I should do it for free or or charge a small price like seven dollars just so you can uh, learn how to do what you see here. All right, I also have a full um, podcast course already out, and um, I'm trying to get it put up on uh, Udemy, but I also have it out on Thinkific, so you can always go to How to University dot Thinkific dot com 
Also, I have some other side links that will also bring you to there. And if you keep looking at the show, you'll see it on the uh, on the screen below me right here. So if you guys want to know how to start your podcast, real easy. The full course is um, you can go to howtouniversity.thinkific.com. Also, you can go to payhip, that's P-A-Y-H-I-P dot com slash howtouniversity, all right? And you will be able to down, go to that course site and you can download the courses, all right? And the great thing about both sites, one site is you can do it online. You just sign in, put all your information in, sign in anytime you want, go online, take the course or any of the other courses that's available with the download site. You can go and download whatever courses you want. You can download it to your laptop, your cell phone. Just make sure your phone has um, enough space, enough gigs to um, download it to your phone. You can also download it to your tablet, laptop, tablet, desktop, and your mobile phone. All right. That way, anywhere you go, you, if you just feel like taking a part of the course, learning it, you can be with your phone and take the course while you're on the riding the train or something. If you downloaded the course to your phone, you know, you're on the train going home or something like that, or you're flying somewhere, take the course while you're just chilling on the plane or on the train or on the bus or on that or in that lift, right? That lift ride. So you can take the course at any time. All right. Be watching below here, down there. You'll see different things pop up, some being the uh, websites to uh, How To University, the product store, and Survive and Protect, all right? Like I said, I was going to do something different. I was going to do the show yesterday, but what I was doing is trying to get things set up, so, and then the time frame I was doing it in, it was starting to be a lot of people coming in. And I can still do it with people coming in. That's cool, too, because we keep things authentic and real. And so, therefore, you know, at that time, I just figured, well, I won't do it this time around. But uh, maybe next time. All right. Maybe next time. So, I actually had, um, originally was going to talk about, um, I don't know if you are familiar with the school teacher. Marston Riley. I was going to do a show regarding him. But then since things kind of, it was that, that voting day yesterday, I was going to do it yesterday and talk about some voting and the school teacher. But then things kind of shifted. I just decided I was going to wait. And I thought today, I was like, man, it's a great time to do the show today because the voting results. So I called the show, today's show, of Voting, the Voting Aftermath, all right? And so, that's what we're going to talk about today. The voting aftermath. The results. I'm going to be reading some things here and showing you some video, alright? So let's have some fun. A few more people I'm going to share it to and then we're going to get it popping. I was what I was hoping to do was being able to um I was hoping to take the live and be able to put the link on other platforms like my LinkedIn page, um my Twitter page. But I think with the lives you gotta wait till they're done and then put the link on there so everybody can click on it and be able to see it later. So maybe that's something Facebook y'all need to do is enable the ability to share when I'm live to be able to take a link and put it on other platforms so people other people can click on it and watch me live. I'm sure to, I'm sure it will benefit Facebook because when they click on it it's going to bring them to Facebook. And for those who still hadn't signed up with Facebook already from all the billions of people already on Facebook then that's a plus because then you'll have someone new signing in on Facebook. So I think Facebook, y'all need if y'all know y'all listening, that's be a be, that probably be a benefit to you. Also, another thing that came to mind was um, 
was also the fact that I was hoping that um, with the Facebook app, you can go live and everything, but it would be real cool if I could take the app or even the the, um, the app that I'm using here to go live with the Facebook. Because I'm using, I'm not actually on, I'm not actually using the Facebook app to go live. I'm using a, a different platform to go live. Let me see what's going on here. Let me just make sure everything is going good. I just want to make sure I am still showing live here. And it looks like it is. Yeah, there we go. Just making sure here. Okay. I want to make sure Facebook ain't cutting me off. But um, what I was talking about, and I know Facebook, you got to be listening. I'm using DU Recorder to record my my phone screen. All right, and so um, that's how I'm going live. But I also can go live on the app. But by using this DU Recorder, I'm able to do what you guys are seeing on the screen and make it look so nice and official with the with the bells and whistles. Got the rhyming going on. <laughs> nice and official with the bells and whistles. And make it look just just nice. But I was still saying to myself, because it might be times when I just want to go live on using the Facebook app. And what would be real cool if you if Facebook would put um your Mark Zuckerberg, get that feature going where I can use my phone and schedule a live. So I can schedule it on my phone and then come back later on that date that I'm time I schedule it and go on live. All right, that's a feature you need to get uh get get popping on um Facebook, the Facebook app for the Android for both you know Android and uh, iPhone. But uh, make that happen, man. That we can schedule our lives from our phone and be able to go onto our phone and go live with it because um it's not even even with the laptops I don't think possibility to schedule I think and be able to go to it because I haven't been able I tried it on my laptop but it wasn't um, it wasn't working so but anyway let's get to it let's get to it let's get to it all right now about a week about a week and a half ago or so I was watching some videos two videos in particular that uh, some people were talking about voting, all right? They're about an hour long, an hour and maybe 10 minutes or so, both of them roughly around that same time frame. Maybe maybe one is an hour and three minutes, the other one's an hour and nine or an hour and 10 and an hour and seven. But what I was looking at was a show, um, Cannon's Class. Nick Cannon has a YouTube show, I guess. And he had as a guest, Angela Rye. And they were talking about um, whether voting was beneficial. And I also looked at a video with uh, Dr. Claude Anderson and Boyce Watkins. And they were also talking about voting. They were talking about some other things too, but they were also talking about voting. And I found it quite interesting because Angela Rye was trying to, you know, she was campaigning for that pushing for that yeah you know you got to vote it means something it's going to make a difference and i didn't although i didn't look at the whole thing with angela rye and um nick cannon nick cannon was kind of he was speaking like he was against it but he didn't but he was trying to say whether or not he didn't want to say one way or the other whether he votes or will vote or has i guess he's voted in the past but I guess basically when it came down to it, they were debating their points on 
why Cannon, Nick Cannon was more on the why voting really is not working or not important or it's not really going as people think. And Angela Rye was more, she was adamant about, yo, this voting thing is real. It works. It makes a change. It makes a difference. And so I was listening to both of them. More or less, I was listening to more to Angela than uh, Nick. And um, then, like I said, I went over to the Boyce Watkins video with um, Claude Anderson. And I got some interesting perspectives and interesting information. Now, I'm under the impression that, and this is just not like I just had it. This was over the course of some years and paying attention and how things were happening and how things were transpiring as far as voting and then seeing what took place after the vote, right? And so after some years of times I voted and then watched the results and how things, like I said again, has paying attention to whether or not that voting was making a difference. One as a whole, and then one as looking at the different groups, the races of people. All right. I looked at it, I started paying attention from that perspective. I looked at it as a whole, whether it was the local elections or the presidential. And then I also, at the same time, I was paying attention to Okay, I voted, they voted in this, in this, um, the general, the city elections, things like that, things in your state, city, and then also the presidential, and just started paying attention, and, and when I started paying attention, and listening, you know, watching and listening, I started just noticing that, and doing some research as well, hearing other perspectives, and when I'm hearing them, I'm going back and researching them and not just taking somebody saying what somebody's saying. Some things people did say, and there they was right because I've, I already observed these things going on. So I was more or less like, yeah, I'm agreeing with what they're saying because I'm seeing the same thing you're seeing. You didn't have to, you know, you didn't have to tell me to make me believe it. I'm already seeing the stuff that you're saying. And... My conclusions is that, and that's just mine, not anybody else's, is that voting is not really working or is working for certain people. All right? It's working for certain people. Or it's just not working at all. It's all a scam. It's a game. It's a lot of game playing. And then look at Let's look at from today, 10 years to 10 years back, over the years, right? With different presidents, um, even your local elections. You always, every now and then, you hear these same little um, things going on. You hear the voter suppression stuff, right? You hear there's been tampering of machines, or machines didn't work, or certain people were getting intimidated to not go vote. You hear those things off and on every time the election comes around. There's always some game playing all the time. And speaking of that, they was even saying in Georgia yesterday, there was people were finding machines that weren't even plugged in. They was saying that they voted for, and this has been said on other elections too, people were voting for a certain person or certain people, but it kept on registering for somebody else, Right? Um, again, like I said, the machine's not plugged up or they malfunctioning, not working. People are picking candidates, but it's picking, but it's pointing to somebody else. And, you know, at, at, from year to year to year to year to year, and people, the same little things continue to happen, that's going to piss some people off. It's going to turn some people away, which could be the game to begin with. It could be the game to get people to do that. But, it's been happening, it seems like, year in, year out, 
when the elections come around, certain elections, there's always some game playing going on. Then, that's one of the things I noticed. Then, I started noticing that people were voting for, like, for instance, let's talk about black folks. They would vote for, majority of them always say they're going to vote for Democrat. They just vote for Democrat. They don't never seem to, and that's black and white, to be honest with you, because I'm going to play some videos here in a minute to, to make my point. But it seems like when people, when you ask some questions about why they're voting and things along those lines, it always seems like they don't really have any real answer. It's always so generic and so doesn't make sense that you be like, really, you just voted for that? You mean you didn't go research what their policy is about, what they're going to do for this city, what they're going to do for the people in the city? You just went because of an emotional pin-up or hang-up you got with a certain person or a certain group of people, and that's why you voted? Really? That's crazy. And so, after a while, then I started noticing, well, I mean, not noticing, but I knew for a long time, especially when it comes to the presidential situation, that you got a system where we're allowed to vote for a president, but then you got two, two parts of that voting system. You got the people voting for the president and other things going on and then you have the electoral college that decides who's the president so you can have a situation where let's say 95% of the people in the United States voted for this president but this president is the one that ends up getting elected the one that no the 95% didn't vote for because the electoral college decided nah we want this person to be this is who we vote for president so just that system alone can set up and rig a, and rig the presidential election every time. But yet, millions of people in the country get tricked and get hyped up and cheered up to go vote for that president, not realizing that we can all we can do one hundred percent vote for this president. Although that'll really, I guess, it will never be like that. But if it just as in, if everybody just decided just to say, if everybody just got together in the whole country and said, you know what, let's all vote for this president. And then they vote for it, but then the Electoral College picks somebody else. That will just, that will kill everything. That will just make everybody definitely see what's really going on with the um, election. But, like I said, you got on top of that, you got machines getting rigged to vote. If I pick this one, it's going to go to that one. If I pick this candidate for city something, it's going to go to that candidate over there. And this happens, seem like, every election. And then yet, although that happens, nobody seems to step to the people in charge of these things and make sure this stuff doesn't happen. It keeps happening every year seems like, or every so often, how many year, how many seasons, or whatever. But people just keep getting riled up and getting tricked into voting. And another thing that just dawned on me is that we just seem to just be a following type of people. We just keep, we just follow just because. We just follow. It's like we put no thought into it. We don't think. We don't research anything. We just, because they didn't, they doing it, or such and such said this. Let's go. And that's not, it's not cool. That's not a cool way to go about things. You got to have some type of analytical mindset a little bit, a critical thinking mindset, even just a little bit. You hear something, instead of just like, yeah, okay, yeah, they Democrat. How about looking up their name on the internet and find out what they're about and find out if their policies or the issues that you have 
that you want to address, let's see if they're the people that's going to address them. Or if they're wanting to address them or they want to help with that particular issue or issues. Then when you do that, you might say, oh, no, that's not even though they're Democrat, that's not the Democrat I want. Because truth be told, there's a lot of um, what do you call conservative Democrats. And really, they're not really for what a lot of Democrats, people who call themselves Democrats are for. They get tricked every time. So, but um, let me play something here. About the voter suppression that was going on. Swing Trader from Investors Business in Daily Georgia. helps you make more, more money. All right. Just so y'all can hear what I'm talking about here. So this video here, um, you're just gonna hear the audio of it. Um, I could, I could show it, but I'm just gonna play the audio. You're gonna see um, or hear about the uh, voter suppression and the little games they play, and it's ridiculous, man. Some of the rules. And um, matter of fact, before I say something, before I let you hear it, um, I think it was Stacey Abrams running against Brian Kemp, I guess for governor, and something I didn't even know. Until probably today or yesterday. Is that Brian Kemp is over the voting process. And then yet he won. I, I think he was running against Stacey Abrams, a black lady from uh, Georgia, to become governor. But I think he ends up getting becoming governor. But yet he's the one that's in charge of the voting process. That's the stuff I'll be talking about. There's a lot of games going on. All right. So I want y'all guys to listen to this real quick. The country because dozens of states have enacted new voting rules this year. Voting rights advocates say they are seeing uh, parallels to uh, trends of the past and effort to limit minority votes. The fight for voting rights has become a defining issue. I'm going to be counted. I'm not going to give up. Sabina Moore says she's one of 53,000 people in Georgia whose voter registration is in limbo, most of them black voters, because of a mismatched address or incorrectly spelled name. I don't think there's a way to take away race from this election. Like, it is so important. It is the South. Like, there is still so much overt racism happening here. In Georgia's heated race for governor, the state's dark past of racial discrimination looms large. Democrat Stacey Abrams, in a bid to be Georgia's first African-American governor, is facing Republican Brian Kemp, who happens to be Secretary of State, the man who enforces the voting rules. In the Brian Kemp, Secretary of State, the man who enforces the voting rules was running for governor against Stacey Abrams in Georgia. He's the guy that enforces the voting rules. And he's running for governor. <laughs> Who some accuse of trying to suppress votes. How could someone that's running the election that also be running in it and have it be like completely unbiased? Kemp says he's just following the state's exact match verification law aimed at preventing fraud. I show my driver's license. My now they have a thing called the exact match voting law, I guess. Whereas you got to have your name on your license, and I guess the address on your license where you live. Now I don't know about. I have to research that. I don't know if it's a thing where they have that because what they were showing in the video was a person's name, and they'll have an address saying one two three any street. Georgia, Tennessee, I mean, Georgia, um, something, something Georgia in the zip code. And I think what they're saying is, and this is only an uh, a educated assumption, is that when you go to vote and if the license that you have, the address on it, either A, doesn't match what they have, because I guess you got to show your license before you vote. So if they don't show the same address on their paperwork, that's on your license, then you're not allowed to vote. Or if just the light, the address 
which I guess is all the same thing. If the address doesn't, it's not the address you stay at currently, and they got some way to tell. Like, I guess it's all the same. But something to do with the information on your license, if it's not matching to something or if it's not accurate, then they can keep you from voting. Which, that can be a lot of gain. That can be used... You know, it's, it could come up with a better ruling for um, not allowing somebody to vote. But I guess they're looking at it as if your license information is not correct. Even though you're a real person, you're legit. Maybe your birthday and everything is on there. They could have just looked that up and disregarded the address. And it seems like, again... It's happening to more, it's the issue is with black people. So either A, when you guys are getting your license, you are maybe not paying attention to what's on it to make sure it's accurate, or you guys are moving, and if you're supposed to have the address changed and you don't, then they can use that against you saying, well, hey, you know that's the law in Georgia. Once you move, you got to provide get the right accurate stuff on your license so it'll match what we're showing in our records. <sighs> but let me play the video. Address is what's my name on it. They should be doing the same thing. They shouldn't be treated any special than I'm treated. And I'm getting tired of that kind of crap. It's not just tougher voter ID and registration rules. Across the country, tens of thousands of voters have been improperly kicked off state voter rolls. The purges getting more aggressive, up 33% since the last midterm. We are moving up the highway of freedom toward the city of equality, and we can't afford to stop now. Pre-1965, a lot of states, primarily in the Deep South, made it extraordinarily difficult to access the ballot, but then implemented voting restrictions that had a very disproportionate impact on the basis of race. After the Civil War, it was poll taxes, property ownership rules, and literacy tests aimed at disenfranchising African Americans. The civil rights movement of the 1960s fought back that march from Selma to Montgomery, directly leading to passage of the landmark Voting Rights Act of 1965. The real hero of this struggle is the American Negro. His actions and protests, his courage to risk safety, and even to risk his life. Since then, the federal government's policed new state voting laws, acting as a check on states trying to restrict access to polling places, early voting, or imposing strict new ID rules. But in 2013, the Supreme Court changed all that. These laws, they've been upheld by the Supreme Court, but they, for at least a, a portion of the population, um, actually do serve as a genuine obstacle to voting. Now a new chapter in the fight for voting rights, which advocates say are still under assault. So it seems like certain states could put in these rules for voting and that would make, now I was sitting down when I, when I was saying that, I was thinking to myself, well, that can make it appear that voting is important because people are going out their way to change voting laws. So to make it harder for certain people to come out and vote. And that can be looked in different ways on the critical thinking or analytical thinking mindset. That can be looked at in a lot of different ways. Like I said now, when it comes to the presidential elections, you got an electoral college that is going to kind of cut off what you pick. Unless everybody picks the same person, then they're going to see how much game it is. Then I guess the electoral college will have no choice but to go with what everybody picked. But that's never going to happen. You're going to never, it'll be... It'd be a rare thing to happen, but I don't think it'll ever happen where the whole country is going to vote for the same person to be president. So that's going to be out. That's going to look at that as out the question. So what they're saying is certain states, I don't know if it's the federal government doing it, the Supreme Court, or each state is coming up with these rules, or they're allowing the, the states come up with different rules to determine voter registration 
And it always seems like in certain areas, they're making the rules harder or they're making things harder for you to be able to vote. And so that would give the impression that voting is important. But what it could be is that when you're doing the local voting, that's probably where it gets really important. And so to kind of slow things up, we got to throw some little monkey wrenches in the mix to keep people from coming out or to discourage them from coming out and vote. So that's a possibility that local elections are more important than your your bigger ones, your presidentials. But it's still more to say about that because still when you look at things, does, does your vote really matter? And I had um, later on in the, uh, as you see down below me, I posted a question where, or a comment to say, is your money, what's more important, your money towards an election? Is your money more important or your vote? And I say that to say that that's another thing I was looking at. I would notice that certain groups of people, racial-wise, racial live in a country, live in a particular city, but you don't see too many of them going out to vote, but you know there's a lot of them there living there, legally living there, but you don't see them too much going out to vote. So I'm wondering if their money is really what's making things happen putting your money towards a candidate to help them with ads and stuff like that. Is it more of the money more important? Because you're saying, hey, I'm going to put my money into you. We're going to get about a million people and we're going to put our money into you now. If you don't do what we want you to do, we're going to make sure that you don't make it or you might make this election, but we make sure you get out the next, the very next one because we won't put our money back into you. So, is the money more important or is the vote more important? All right. Now, what I'm going to do is play. Matter of fact, I might play the one on my computer, my phone here for a sec. So let me just, uh, let me do this. I'm going to pull up a video. And. Oh, that's not what I want. Let's see here. All right, let me see here. Let me play good old John Lewis. Good old John Lewis, right? Now, and then I'm going to play uh, either all or some of Oprah's, all or some of uh, John Lewis. Now, Every time it's the time to get black people to come out, they'll start getting all these black folks to come up here and go vote, go vote, you gotta vote. Uh, threaten them with little nonsensical threats to vote. And you ain't this if you don't go vote. You ain't that if you don't go vote. All right? Let me see something real quick here. And so, let me play some of this and make some comments in between. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome civil rights legend and congressman from Georgia's 5th District, John Lewis. sisters. I'm delighted 
very happy to be here. I remember many, many years ago, when I was a little child growing up in rural Alabama, 50 miles from Montgomery, I started a little place called Troy. I grew up on a farm, have raised chickens. As a little boy, I wanted to be a minister. If we would gather all of our chickens together in the chicken yard, and I would preach to the chickens. And on one occasion, I tried to baptize one. It just didn't work. But those chickens... Now, he going through all of this stuff. It got nothing to do with voting. He's talking about he used to preach to the chickens and baptize chickens. This game got nothing to do with, with uh, voting and what's it going to do for people. But let me go on. That I preached to in the 40s and the 50s tended to listen to me much better than some of my colleagues in the Congress listen to me today. Now the chickens listen to him much better, much more better than his colleagues today. I wonder why they're not listening to you, John. Because I don't know if your conversations with them is the same as what you're talking about now with chickens and stuff like that, right? I wonder why they don't listen to you. And maybe some other things will play here in a second or you'll listen to and see as to maybe why. And some of those chickens were just a little more productive. Look, just listen for a moment. Growing up in Alabama, not living in Georgia since I was 23 years old, had all of my hair and a few pounds lighter. At one time in the state of Alabama, there were African-American lawyers and doctors and teachers, college professors, were told they could not read or write well enough. They could not register to vote. They could not pass the so-called literacy test. There are forces in America today want to take us back. But we're not going back. we come too far. We're going forward. Just because you're saying that, um, there's still things taking place that is trying to get us pushed back. Right? But let me play on. Let me play on. As the governor of the state, we're going forward. Did he say Stacey Avery instead of Abram? And when the state of Georgia become blue, along with the state of Texas, they will not be able to hold us down. Now he's saying all this hyped up stuff, but not one time we talking about any policies. Um, there's been some black people hung, lynched in Georgia of recent years. No talk about that. Uh, matter of fact, those cases have been real quiet. But um, I think there's been over pa over the past year and a half or two, there's been like five people that was that was hung. And I think it's in, in Atlanta or near the area. Nobody speaks about it. Probably a lot of people that live there don't even know about it. No talk about that. I didn't really. I wasn't really checking Stacey Abrams or any of her speeches, but I haven't heard that she said anything about that um, on Stacey Abrams' website. If you would have looked at her policies about certain issues, it would make you. I'll just say this: it'll make you wonder and think. But so far, John is telling nothing about nothing. It's going to happen. Many, many years ago, I heard a Rosa Parks. I heard the words of Martin Luther King Jr. on our radio. The action of Rosa Parks, the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. inspired me to get involved in the civil rights movement. And I want to say to the young people, to the students here, I got arrested a few times. During the 60s, I went to jail 40 times. 
Since I've been in Congress, I've been arrested another five times. And I'm probably going to get arrested again for something. I'm not suggesting that any of you should go out and get arrested. But when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, stand up and say something. Do something. Okay, I don't recall him ever standing up and saying something or doing something about unarmed people getting shot. I don't remember it. Um, I think he's a rep from Georgia. I don't we ever recall hearing him say, because he said, stand up and speak on it. He's going to go to jail for speaking up. That's basically what he was kind of alluding to. He guess he's going to go to jail again because he's going to keep speaking up against certain issues, right? But um, John Lewis, there's been people in your state, I think you were representing the state of Georgia, that has um, been hung. And a lot of people are sure had nothing to do with suicide. And matter of fact, I think a couple of cases were where people was um, indicating that the way the people were hung, it was impossible for them to hang themselves that way. Because certain little pieces of evidence was showing that it was impossible for them to hang themselves in that way. Which would mean the person was hung and lynched, right? We still got lynchings. It's 2018 and we still have lynchings that go on. Something that was back in like the civil rights era and slavery times. And then he said that we're not going back to those days but then some foul hateful dirty MFers bring them back by lynching certain people right I gave a little blood on that bridge in Selma he gave some blood 53 years ago on that bridge in Selma. I almost died. Some of my friends and colleagues were murdered in Mississippi and other places. I'm not asking any of you to give any blood. I'm just asking you to go and vote like you never voted before. We have to vote. Vote for what, John? What are we voting for? What are we voting for? He ain't said one thing. Just go out. Just go out. Y'all just go out and vote. Don't think, just vote. Don't use your brain, just go vote. Vote for what, John? Vote for what? The vote is the most powerful, most powerful, nonviolent instrument or tool we have in a democratic society. And we must use that. Use that. Go out and vote. say go out and think <laughs> think 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 go out and think but just go out and vote what has he said in this whole speech right here that said what commitments the candidates are going to make what commitments they're going to stand by what commitments are they going to do for specific groups that are getting targeted nothing You can do it. You can do it. And we must do it. Let's go to the polls and vote like we never, ever voted before. We can do it. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, what did he say? 
What did he say that encouraged you to go vote? I like to know. So what did he say that was encouraging enough for you guys to go and vote? What? What did he say? See, these are the, the things I'm talking about. When these people come out here, they, they send uh, their people out to get the black people really riled up and hyped up to go vote. Is really, really want to be honest about it. And then my understanding, because I know I heard him a, f a couple of times, he always wants to throw out. To go vote is really, really want to be honest about. It. He always wanted to go and um, he always talks about Selma and, and getting beat up. Why is that so? Something to be proud of. You would want to say. That you was out there in Selma or on that bridge and when they went to swing at you, you went and protected yourself. That's something to be proud of because you want your family, your grandkids or whatever to say to see that, you know, I stood up for this particular situation and, you know, I fought for mine. They wasn't going to hang me. They wasn't going to hang me on no bridge me and such and such such and such and other group of people we fought for our rights but why is it so like that's such a big deal like you got your head bashed in and you use that for everything when it comes to uh, getting things changed are you just trying to play to people's emotions I don't think too many people even care about you go walking on that bridge and getting your head bashed in. I'm sure people want to want to hear more that you you fought, whether it was the police bashing your head in, whether it was uh, other white people that was bashing your head in, keeping you from walking across the bridge and voting. That's not that's not something to be um, admired. But all they can tell you is go vote, right? He said nothing of substance. And then here we have Oprah with her little trick bag as well. Little trick bag of words. And then I notice I forget what's at what minute. I'll listen to some and maybe fast forward a little bit to um the one that every they always seem to play about her saying something about the ancestors and you're not part of that's not your family if you don't vote for the ancestor. My thing was, how you know what the ancestors wanted at that particular time? They probably wasn't even thinking about voting. Or the voting laws probably wasn't even in effect yet for anybody during your <coughs> ancestors' time. So... substance what commitments is she telling or saying that Stacey Abrams is going to make for the people of Georgia you giving quotes of a song and then you look like you're trying to find your place where you was last reading that and, and I will 
will tell you, I will tell you that we are not powerless. Every single one of us, every single one of us has the same power at the polls. And every single one of us has something that if done in numbers too big to tamper with. out to get Oprah, John Lewis, and a whole host of others, right, to feed you a bunch of um, nothing, about nothing, still, you're not talking about any policies, you're not speaking on what Stacey Abrams is about, what she's going to do for the people, what she's going to do about uh, black men getting shot up, what she's going to do about economics, What's she going to do about gentrification that's going on in Georgia? That's been going on? What? See, you're not talking about anything of substance at all. Whether you're developmentally disabled, doesn't matter at the polls. We matter. are all equal in power. So on November... And they try to... And they always... Now, John Lewis said the same thing. When you get in the vote, when you vote, it makes everybody equal. Right? Now, John Lewis, you just heard in that video say that. Now, she's saying the same thing. They're using the same talking points, right? You're all equal when you're in the voting booth. It makes everybody equal. You all here, you already got it. You got it. So now your job is to go out and let everybody else know how to get it. That you make your voice heard on November 6th. We have this incredible opportunity to make history. We have our inalienable right to vote because the one place where we're all equal, where is it? It's at the polls. And I'm here today. We're equal at the polls. We are all equal. We're equal at the polls, right? We are equal at the polls. Because I know you know that, but I just came to remind you of the power. I'm here because I want you to remind others of the power. And I want to make it very clear to all the press, everybody, I'm not here because I'm making some grandstand because I'm thinking about running myself. I don't want to run, okay? I'm not trying to test any waters. seeped in your DNA when? The day you did this speech. Because uh, I don't recall you saying anything about these people's blood seeping in your DNA last month. Earlier this year, two months ago, but all of a sudden, these people are beginning oppressed and suppressed and mistreated and all of a sudden, their blood just seeping in your, in your bones and in your body. 
Oprah. When did this happen? Again, when you started making this speech, right before you done this speech, all of a sudden. But you never hear her talking about anything after this. You didn't hear anything about it before this. But y'all getting hyped up about voting, right? To let their sacrifices be in vain. voting seriously until around my mid-twenties. And around my mid-twenties, I had, had, the, had the privilege of hearing Reverend Otis Moss Jr., who's a preacher. Y'all know him? Preacher. Preacher. Now, she's going about talking, again, you need to talk about the things that matter to people, but you're going back to when you grew up, and this happened, and that happened. But nothing of substance, nothing about what Stacey Abrams is about, what she's going to do for us the state of Georgia, what's she going to do for the people, what's she going to do about gentrification that's been going on in her state, what's she going to do about the people, the five or six people hung in her state, what's she going to do for the people in general as a whole in her state, she's talking about none of that. Here in, 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 in Cleveland, Ohio, and I heard him tell the story of you talking about You're talking about somebody from Cleveland, Ohio, and you in Georgia. His father, of Otis Moss Sr., who right here in Georgia's Troop County, got up in the morning and put on his only suit and his best tie. And he walked six miles to the voting poll location he was told to go to in LaGrange. And when he got there, after walking six miles, in his good suit and tie. They said, boy, you at the wrong place. You at the wrong place. You need to go over to Mountville. So he walked another six miles to Mountville. And when he got there, they said, boy, you at the wrong place. Every time they want to get black people to, to do something, they come up with these old stories of slave stories. I was down, under, and yonder, and we was doing this. But they tell you nothing about what's going on today in that state, in the cities in, that's in the state. They always want to give you the slave story. John Lewis want to tell you how he got beat up. Like, that's something to be proud about. You want to be, you want some grandkid to be proud because you stood up, you fought physically, and you did some other stuff. You don't want them to say, oh, I just stood there and got my head bashed in. But this is what they're pushing out to certain groups of people and they to get them emotionalized to do something that nobody's thinking. What do these people stand for? What are their policies on certain issues? How are they going to deal with this that's going on? All the stuff that's going on now or that's went on in Georgia, how are you going to handle that? And then like I said when I played the video earlier, the guy who's over the voting system is the one who won in Georgia as the governor. He's over the voting system. Could he have set the system up? Then they were saying some of the machines, again, the machines were malfunctioning in Georgia. Some of the machines weren't even plugged up. Some people were picking certain candidates, but it was going to somebody else. And nobody's putting them to the test and checking this stuff. It's going to go right on over everybody's heads and it's going to be another day to the next time they come out and tell y'all, go vote. And y'all just going to go vote and not think. And not say, well, what about the machines last time? Show me how the machines going to work this time. Show me what you're going to do about these people getting hung throughout the year. Five or six people. Show me about this people. Show me about your gentrification plan to keep that from happening. Moving that's pushing certain people out in certain cities. Next time around, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go vote. You need to go to the Rosemont School, and I picture him walking 
from dawn to dusk in his suit, his feet tired, getting to the Rosemont School, and they say, boy, you too late. The emotional speeches, using the word boy, because that's going to bring some emotional thing out you. Boy, you can't go vote here. They're bringing all the slavery talk to so get you emotionally riled up. Polls are closed, and he never had a chance to vote. By the time the next election came around, he had died. So when I go to the polls and I cast my ballot, I cast it for a man I never knew. I cast it for Otis Moss Sr., who walked 18 miles one day just for the chance to vote. For my grandmother, Hattie Mae Lee, who died in 1963 before the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and never had a chance to vote. I vote for her. Yeah. And when I stand in the polls, I do what Maya Angelou says. I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. Who didn't have the now here comes the ancestor speech to really put you in the guilt the guilt trip here's the here's the guilt bag trip again here we go that we might have the right to vote and for anybody here who has an ancestor who didn't have the right to vote and you are choosing not to vote wherever you are in this state, in this country, you are dishonoring your family. So just going out to vote or not going out to vote because None of them, John Lewis or Oprah, said anything of substance as to why, why to go vote, why, other than these emotional, that's your ancestors did this and you're not part of their family. Emotional threats. Oh, such and such walk down yonder 16 miles to get you emotionalized. But they're not telling you about the policies of these people. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So let me pull up Stacey Abrams' website. Hi, Miss Allison. How are you doing? Good. Did you get everything set up? Yes, ma'am. I'm just, just going to use my debit card. Is that okay? and disregarding their legacy, their suffering and their dreams when you don't vote. So, honor your legacy. Honor your legacy. Honor your right to, to citizenship in this, which is the greatest country in the world. The greatest country in the world. And the right to vote is like, like, like the crown we all get to wear. Maya used to say, baby, your crown has been paid for, so put it on your head and wear it. here in Georgia. This is tight. And there are tight races all over this country that depend on all... Alright, I'm going to get out of that. Alright. Let's go look something up real quick. Let's see here. 
Let's see if we can find a Stacey Abrams site here. If not, I'm just going to read it to you from the laptop. All right, yeah, it's the site I was looking for. Let me see if I can find what I'm looking for here. Nobody's bothered to say or show what this lady is about. At all. Okay, let me see here. Let me pull this up. Okay, let's look up the issues. Stacy's vision for Georgia. We have the ability to build, okay, blah, yada, yada, yada. Uh, let me see. Let's see. Affordable housing, education, energy, and environment, equal rights. Let's look at the equal rights. Let's look at that. Let's see. She will stand up for all communities. She was raised with the values of faith, family, service, and responsibility. And she believes in treating every person with the basic human dignity and respect. Those are the Georgia values that will ensure every family has the freedom and opportunity to thrive. All right, let's see here. Champion robust anti-discrimination laws to advance protections for all workers. Okay, champion robust anti, which means against, going against discrimination laws to advance protections for all workers. I'm going to say that again. Champion robust, that's the number one right there, right under, as, as you guys see that on the screen, um, where it says, as Governor Stacy will champion. What does it mean when you say you're a champion? That's what I'm saying. They play with words. What does it mean when, when you say you will champion robust anti-discrimination laws to advance protections for all workers? Work collaboratively, collaboratively, <laughs> collaboratively. With legislators to ensure that protections against harassment are strong, comprehensive, and just statewide. Work collaboratively with legislators. You will collaborate with legislators. You will work with them to ensure that protections against harassment. What kind of harassment? Are strong, comprehensive, and just. Reform the Georgia Commission on Equal Opportunity. You're going to reform it, right? Reform the Georgia Commission on Equal Opportunity into the Georgia Commission on Human Rights. Human Rights, which will set clear pathways for harassment complaints. And be a referral point for Georgia workers. Stacy's record, she fought legislation that would enshrine discrimination in state law. She fought it, but what was the results? That's what we need to know. Supported marriage equality and advocated for comprehensive workplace protections. Her record is she joined the ACLU, Georgia Equality, and the business community in opposition to a bill that would have allowed taxpayer-funded groups to deny services to members of the LGBTQ small little plus there community. That's the only community she was doing that for, for members of that community. Strictly for the LBGTQ community. No other group. No other members. 
She's opposed. She opposed legislation that demonizes immigrant communities. Well, she opposed legislation that demonizes immigrant communities. Who are the immigrants? Who are the immigrants she's talking about? Now, those two groups, the LGBTQ and the immigrant community folks, what other groups is she going to look out for except those, besides those two groups? All right? But these are the things you guys should be doing when you um thinking about voting. You need to go on their sites, like I'm showing you now, and start reading up on their policies about stuff. Now, she got over here. Uh, it says, check out more of Stacey Abrams' visions for equal rights. I see LGBTQ rights up there. I see immigrant justice. So, most of the time when you... I did a... Um, I might have done uh, an episode of Thoughts of the Week regarding words, like I'll say a certain word and it gives, and what, I might have done this on Periscope, that I would say a certain word and then I would ask the people what group or race of people comes to your mind when I say that word. Like when I say terrorist, what word comes to your mind? When I say um, mental illness, what race of people come to your mind? Stuff like that. And so, I'm going to say here, you see LGBTQ, what comes to your mind. This is on Stacey Abrams' site now. And when you hear the word immigrant, what normally, what race of people normally come to your mind? When you see immigrant justice, or the word immigrant. Now, it says here, check out more of Stacey Abrams' visions for equal rights on the LGBTQ rights and immigrant justice. Now, she's black, but she ain't said nothing about black people at all in there. She said LGBTQ community and the immigrant community. And economic mobility, whatever that is. But these are the things you need to do when you're looking at candidates in your city, your state. Find out what they, what issues, you know, what they support. Right? Right? Find out what topics, what's their record on things. Now, this thing that says, as governor, Stacy will. Again, these words, man, that's what I'm saying. Words are important. It says she will champion robust. You know, what is champion robust anti-discrimination laws to advance protections for all workers? What does that mean? What does that mean when you say you're a champion? Why not just use regular words, be real, and stop trying to play? But I digress from that, and I'm just going to go back to some other things here. All right? But these are some things you need to consider when it comes to that. Um, there was something else I wanted to uh, actually play. So you guys can check it out. And, oh yeah, I know what it was. I was trying to remember what it was. All right. Let's get back. It was kind of going back to the people voting type thing right so let me play this towards the beginning I think this is it right here What's the big issue for you when you're voting Republican on, on Tuesday? Listen to this. Trump. Keep it American. I'm for, I'm for everything he stands for. It's a, now, this guy asked her, what's the biggest issue <laughs> to you? Issue meaning like stuff like the LGBTQ rights and immigrant justice and 
if you don't like certain things, you know, issues that you want to support, you want people to support, right? The dude asked him, what's your biggest issue? Like, it could be gentrification. I want them to stop gentrifying this area, which is making these group of people getting pushing them out of there. Stuff like that, right? That's the issues. And this lady's, her answer was Trump. <laughs> I support everything he, he's about, he stands for. But she couldn't tell you one issue. Not one. So people just go out here and say stuff. They don't know what they're talking about. They just, they really don't, don't even have anything. It's just, it's based off of, you can look at that and say it was a race thing. You can hear the voice and, and pretty much tell who was who in that video. You can pretty much tell. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna rewind it back a little bit, and so you can hear it again. Big vote. I hope you voted and let your voice be heard today. Coming up on the show, President Trump is not on the ballot, but he's at the center of this midterm debate like no president before him. In our big race inside the president's final sprint of the campaign, he calls it a referendum. So what message will voters send? Plus, why college-educated women in the suburbs could decide this election. Our big issue, the top concerns those women have as they head to the polls. And the big number, the latest election forecast from 538, plus a first look at the exit polls just coming in. And we'll talk live to the top Republicans and Democrats about the state of the party and our team all across the country about how the candidates in those key races are feeling right now. And in the big race today, right. let's take a look at the big picture. There are 435 House seats up for grabs tonight, 35 in the Senate, and 30... Six governorships at stake today as well. But the biggest race of all tonight. <laughs> Maybe one that's go. not on the ballot. It's a showdown between President Trump and that movement of Democratic opposition that rose up just after the inauguration to challenge him. Well, tonight is the first opportunity that voters have to weigh in on the Trump presidency. Now, I want y'all to listen to this again. Where he stands, just listen to him on the campaign trail. Listen. And I'm not on the ticket, but I am on the ticket. A vote for Morrissey is a vote for me. A vote for Mike. And a vote for Cindy. A vote for Marsha. And, and a vote, vote for Steve. A vote for Mike Braun. So a vote for David. Is a vote for me and our agenda to make America great again. And President Trump is watching the returns, laying low today at the White House. But make no mistake, he knows what's at stake for him. The Democrats do, too. It's why we saw him barnstorm this campaign to the finish 44 campaign rallies in 22 states this year alone. Something no president has ever done before. Listen up. What's the big issue for you when you're voting Republican on, on Tuesday? Trump. Keeping America. I'm for, I'm for everything he stands for. It's the Trump agenda. Exactly right. Okay. It's the agenda. What, what's at stake for you? Well, I think the country. The president's been campaigning these midterms as if he's on the ballot. Of course, he's not. But Republicans, Democrats, even the president himself oh, say these midterms are very much about. When he asked, so he asked the lady, what's her issue? She's like. Oh, actually, before this, you know, as she as the the news guy was approaching the lady, she was trying to wave somebody to come in, like I guess to talk. But either the person wasn't paying attention, or they didn't want to come in because she really didn't know what to say, didn't have anything to say. So then, when he finally asked her, "Well, what's your issues?" and she's like, "Uh, uh, uh Trump. Trump is your issue." I support everything that Trump does. That was her issue. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. What's at stake this election for you? 
Oh, immigration. They closed the border so that we protect our children. Well, you do got the caravan right now, so the migrant situation, border control is definitely a serious issue. President Trump has been out on the campaign trail more than any other president in modern history for the midterms. If you don't want to be saying Speaker Pelosi for the next two years, get out and vote. In speech after speech, the president has <laughs> if been you don't want to see, say, the rhetoric of fear. If you don't want to say Speaker Pelosi, get out and vote. No issues. That's affecting people. The real stuff that's affecting people. If you just don't want to hear them say Speaker Pelosi, get out and vote. As you look at what's marching up, that's an invasion. That's not, that's an invasion. Democrats want to invite caravan after caravan of illegal aliens to pour into our country. And despite his calls for civility and unity, the president has been demonizing his opponents with personal attacks. Elizabeth Warren wants to get rid of, I don't, I can't call her Pocahontas anymore because she has no Indian blood. <laughs> What's your take on the president's tone in some of these rallies? You know, it, to me, that's the problem is everybody get. Yo, T. Rump is off the chain, man. T. Rump, he's crazy. It's so called up in what's not important. He's funny. What is important is what he's doing for this country, what he's doing for us, the middle class, hardworking Americans. The politician never says what they really mean. And uh, this man says what he means and he does what he says he's going to do. Well, you wouldn't know it here, but President Trump's approval rating is below 50% nationwide. Historically, a liability headed into the midterms that's lifting the spirits of Democrats. The president is determined to defy the odds. On Tuesday, we'll find out if he and Republicans can do it. To get your family, to get your friends, get your neighbors, get your co-workers, and to go out and vote Republican. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. This midterm will come down to turn out. More Americans are expected to <laughs> so vote today than it didn't. You know, and this happens every time, you know, elections come around. When you ask certain people what are the issues that are important to them, they don't even know what to say. They couldn't tell you. They don't know what. To, they don't know what to say, and it's always something silly. It's always based off of who they like. It's, it's never nothing of concrete substance, and it's crazy. Uh, let me see here. What are we going to look at here? I had. Uh, I had pulled up some of the results. Oh, yeah, here we go. So, it looks like the um, the Democrats have taken over the House. And the Republicans are holding on to the Senate. And they kind of gave some... They gave some breakdowns as to... And some numbers as how to... Uh, how things took, how things uh, went off or occurred, I should say. So they had like 46 Democrats minus two in the Senate. The Republicans gained two in the Senate. In the House, the Democrats gained 26, and the Republicans lost 26. All right? And then the governor's race, let's see here. They got, like, likely Democrats. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, the likely winner, Gavin Newsom, of California, of Hawaii. You have David Ives or Eags. I think that's how you pronounce it. In New York, you got Andrew Cuomo. Minnesota, we got Tim Walls, Democrat. Um, the likely winner. Pennsylvania, you got Tom Wolf. Illinois, you got J.B. Pritzker. Uh, let me see. You got Connecticut. That was they said the Connecticut race was a tight race for uh, governor and Ned Lamont. I guess is the likely winner. Let me see here. They said the uh, it's a tight race, but I guess they called it for um, Ron. DeSantis for uh, Florida, but his is like 49 points from what I'm looking at here on the site. It might have been more since then, 
more or less, but 49.7% for him. And then Andrew Gillum had 49.1%. So I don't know what's up with that. And, of course, you got the Georgia. Brian Kemp, the one who's in charge of the voting situation, actually becomes governor. And so that's going to look real shaky because if you're in charge of running the voter system and then you win, who's to say you didn't set the system up for you to win? And yet, that's like I said in Georgia, they were saying these machines were messing up or people were picking one person and it was choosing the other. So how do we know that he didn't have that set up for him to win anyway And in Georgia? Got to do your research. Got to look up stuff. Just can't go mouthing off with things. Uh, Maine, we have Janet Mills, Democrat, the likely winner. Nevada, Steve uh, Sisolak or Sisolik. At Ohio is Mike DeWine, Republican. Iowa is Kim Reynolds, Republican. Um, Wisconsin, Tony Evers, Democrat. Uh, what are we gonna do here? Oregon, Kate Brown, Democrat, Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer, Rhode Island. We got Gina Raimondo. I'm thinking she's Spanish. Colorado's Jared Polis. Kansas, we have Laura Kelly, Democrat, the likely winner. Let me see if we got everything over here. Then uh, Alaska, we're looking at Mike Dunleavy. The likely winner. I think this is the governor's race. South Dakota, we got Republican Christy Nome. Oklahoma, got Kevin Stitt, the likely Republican winner. All these are Republicans that I'm getting ready to read out. For Arizona, Doug Ducey. Maryland is Larry Hogan. New Hampshire, um, Chris Sununu. South Carolina, Henry McMaster. Tennessee, Bill Lee, Texas, Greg Abbott. Those are all the, um, so far that I can see, the governor, governor's races. And then they have a breakdown of Democrats to Republicans. This might be for the House. Oh, they show like from state to state, each state. Let me see what they got here. Kamala Harris. Democrat, are they saying that she the incumbent? Race called for Diane Feinstein in Cali. Race called for Nevada, Jackie Rosen. I don't know. This could be, let me see something real quick. Texas. Ted Cruz. Oh, this must be we're dealing with the Senate in the House. So, yeah, I heard Ted Cruz won again. Um, who we got in Louisiana? John Kennedy is a Republican. Hmm. Bill Cassidy is a Republican incumbent. Mississippi is Roger Wicker. Uh, Republican. Alabama, Doug Jones, Democrat. Let's go to Georgia. Johnny Isaacson, Republican incumbent. And you got David Perdue in Georgia as well, Republican. Let's see. Marco Rubio, Florida. And you got Rick Scott and Bill Nelson was a close one. 50.2% and 49.8%. Let's go up the East Coast a little bit. We got, let me see if I can put this out for y'all to look at real quick here. So you can see. Let's see, let me show y'all something. There we go. Alrighty, so then we got Illinois, you got Tammy Duckworth, Richard Durbin, I'm just kind of randomly going around, North Dakota, Kevin Kramer, the likely winner, like I said, this might have something to do with the House and the uh, Senate, 
What do these purple mean right here? Angus King for Maine. I don't know what the blue, what the purple stands for. Bernie Sanders. Oh, there must be the Independence, maybe. That's what the purple is there for. For Vermont, Bernie Sanders. For Maine, it's Angus King. That's interesting. Let's go to Washington State. Democrat Maria Can Cantwell. And then we got uh, Patty Murray. Next election, 2022. Let me see what this one is. Okay. So I'm just giving y'all a little something, something to check out. Let me uh, expand this a little bit. All right. Set of results for all states. You got Arizona, uh, Martha McSally. That was a close one. With Kirsten Cinema. In California, Diane Feinstein. Connecticut, uh, Chris. You got Chris Murphy. Then we're looking at what is this here? This must be the um, the house, if I'm not mistaken. And then they give you the breakdown of Republicans and Democrats in the house. Of course, it looks like, as you see right here. Democrats got 222. I think all they needed was 218 to win the House. And so they got 222. And I don't know if this means that they gained because they gained 26. It brought them over the top to get 222. And, of course, the Republican side of the uh, House lost 26. 417 of 435 races called. You go results for Alabama. <clears throat> El Quis de los Países. I don't know what that's for. I can read Spanish. Some of the words I know what it means. Some I don't. 97% of the persons uh, may identify. Oh, solo map. Okay. Democrats, 27. Republicans, independents, zero. And then some more breakdowns of everything. And what else they got here? And then, of course, some stories. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Like I said, a little breakdown of things. All right. Little breakdown of things here and there. And so, let me see what else we got here before we get too far out. I don't know what this thing is doing. But pretty much that's that's how things roll, man. Like I said, when it comes to the voting, oh, let me go back. There was something I couldn't remember. I was talking about how um, I was watching Nick Cannon's uh, YouTube channel, and and he had Angela Rye with him, and they were talking about voting and the importance, if it's not or if it is. And then I looked at a video with uh, Claude Anderson and Boyce Watkins, and they were also talking about. Voting. Now there was a um, thing, and I can't remember that Claude Anderson said there was a particular uh, rule or law that's in effect that um, they were talking about if you try to either suppress people's votes or you try to cause supposedly so-called say to keep somebody from voting, and then there's a certain law in effect that he says nobody ever talks about, nobody ever mentions. I got to go back and look at the video and write it down and research it. But he said. The moment you bring that up, that shuts everybody up when they try that nonsense. So that's something I got to look into. He's, Claude Anderson's real uh, astute on different laws about voting and racial stuff and whole host of other things, business as well. 
and he he mentioned something about that. I got again. I got to look at the video and um, I'll write it down the next time, and maybe the next time I'll talk about it. Maybe I maybe I'll do a show in regards to that. The different laws that people are not even aware of. The stuff that's so hidden that they do all this stuff around you without you because you don't know, and so they get away with certain things that was illegal to begin with. Just like a lot of people were saying about the, that Bill Cosby case. They were saying they did a lot of illegal stuff that they wasn't even allowed to bring, re bring up some case or something like that because it was already taken care of and they and they brought it back and it was illegal. But nobody's challenging nobody. Nobody's saying nothing about it. And that's because of you, what you don't know, they can get over on you. So, and I, like I said, I'll look that up again with the uh, voting situation. And then, of course, you got the 1866, um, that treaty that deals with the uh, Indians that uh, exclusively deals with black people who are in the Indian tribes. And they're not getting their just due for that, that treaty that was that's in place right now. It kind of falls in the reparations realm. So it's so much stuff, man, that they're just due. That they're not, that if you don't know, what you don't know can hurt you, right? And so let me see before I get out of here if there's anything else I was wanting to talk about. I played the videos with good old John Lewis. He likes to talk about every time some issue comes up, he always brings up Selma and he got beat up. Like that's the popular thing to tell everybody that's supposed to. I don't know. I think that would be the opposite, really. But um, I think that's probably it. Let me just make sure here. That's probably, probably it. But other than that, I had some um, something about voting on my mind. And it just seems like, why is it that that's the only options is to vote? Why not holding your vote to to send a message out? Because if they're so, if they're wanting black people to, to vote so bad and they're going out their way to send the Oprahs out, the John Lewis's out, these celebrities, these rappers, to to get you riled up and, and emotionalized to go out and vote if they say it's so important. And it might, it may or may not be. But why is it that they, the choices they give you to, to, of people to vote for, if you research them and you find out they're not really for you or your issues that you're dealing with, but yet you still go out and vote for these people. It's like voting for People say the lesser two evils, but even if you vote for the lesser of the two evils, it's still two evils. Two people are still evil, and you just voting for the lesser of the two. So, to put it in the frame, I remember Dick Gregory saying, "It's like you got two rapists. This rapist here has raped five hundred people, and this rapist over here only raped five people, and you got a choice to pick between the two." That's kind of the choices that you have when you're voting for folks. You're picking two, one of the two rapists. You're picking either the one that's raped 500 or the one that's only raped five. And that's the choices that they're giving you to go vote for. The people just say, I'm just going to go vote. And don't really know what they vote for. Again, you heard the video with the uh, lady... With the white ladies, when he asked, and the guy asked about his issues, the issue she's facing, her answer was Trump. And then she says she stands for everything Trump believes in, but she couldn't tell you one issue that's affecting her that she feels that Trump would take care of. Not one. Then you had the video where, or, the, or you heard the audio of it, of the, uh, the voter suppression tactics and how Georgia's if yours don't match, everything on your license got to match. 
I guess I'm assuming you have to have the right address and the name got to be yours. And maybe it's got to have, for instance, and I don't know, that's something else I probably would look into. Your, you people in Georgia need to be looking into that seriously so y'all don't get hemmed up in some local elections or any type of elections. Y'all need to look up that and find out what the game they're trying to play to keep y'all from voting. Because I'm just going by kind of thinking analytically and looking at it well. If you got to go before you vote, you got to show your license to the people. If they pull out their papers, and let's say, for instance, your name is Mary C. Jackson. But on their paperwork, if it's missing the C, which stands for your middle name, then they'll say you can't vote just because you don't, because your license don't have the, or because their paperwork doesn't show a C, but your license shows a C. So they're going to say that's not you. But everything else matches, birthday, address, and everything. So you better find out and make sure what they're doing and make sure they don't keep changing it from year to year or every few years. Because if it's happening like that and you start noticing a pattern, you can see that they're obviously trying to suppress your vote. And then you got to find out why they're trying to suppress your vote. So Georgia and other states too, everybody really, but Georgia was mentioned. Find out what the game is with this, with the voting in Georgia. Like I said, they got the game with your ID. They got the game that some machines weren't plugged in. They got the game that some of the machines were malfunctioning. They got the game for when you picked a certain candidate, the other candidate got the credit for it. You better find out what's going on and just stop. See, this is when y'all wanted to just go vote. You didn't think. You just went and vote. So now you voted with a malfunctioning machine. Or you went in and they looked at your license and your license don't match with what they got on their paperwork, which could have been done on purpose. But this is for having a go vote mentality. Instead of go vote, like I said, go think. Go think. Not just go vote. Go think. Alright? And again, like I said, most of the time they're giving you the choices of people they're giving you is like they're giving you two rapists. One rape 500 and one rape 5. And they're telling you choose between the two. Choose between this rapist who does rape 5 and this rapist who rape 500. That's the choices they're giving you to vote, to vote on. All right. So, again, I want to just thank y'all for coming in. Thank y'all for checking out the show. And stay tuned because I got more thoughts of the week coming up pretty soon, all right? And I'm out. Peace.